recording, you know. Good morning. Has work been going fine? It has. Slowly. Though I'm very thorough, and I hate the I idea of a place of learning not being an ideal place to learn. I appreciate our talk. Singing perspective has helped me understand the student body more. You're welcome. Hey, have you given any more thought on that fashion thing? I have. Although, I can't see... I really get it. You don't necessarily need to have like a lawn too. You can just let the, the local biocultures just grow there. Like the, the your local biodiversity grow, grow into your lawn. Then you would actually have actual food to eat like I do. But I live near the woods so I get biodiversity whether I want to or not. You- Lewis, you've seen my yard! You've been to my place- like you've been here during the summer months too! I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. Well, there's an event coming up. I could see about trying something new. What would you recommend? That's a good question. What would be good to use here? In my inner eye, I can sepalage the coolest possible fares. The fresh machine is going full throttle. First, the sunglasses. His eye may be a little f too far apart for that. However, beam. Moving on. Big guns, fresh jacket. Okay, now he looks fucking badass. What's YOLO mean? I've heard this term thrown around recently. That was like five years ago. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Gaijin has started talking about my first project for the class. As soon as he said the word, Olivia's hand has shot up. Her gray eyes sparkle with excitement as a smile threatened to crush the perpetual frown etched on her snoot. The girl vibrates in her, sh vibrates in her sheet as, as she waves her arm trying to get the teacher's attention. Ikenen's own smile was strained as he and Olivia engaged in the staring contest with one another. I could only marvel as the two argued with each other without saying a single word. Eventually, Ikenen won by turning off the light and turning on the cheap projector hanging from the ceiling. And playing a safety video about paint that fell far too graphic for a school set. What? <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to eat barbecue for a while. Once you have all the proper safety handling, of course, in the second semester, you'll be allowed to use oil-based paints. Ah, um, it's not really oil-based, but uh, there are actual dangerous paints to use. Uh, back in, like, the lead paint. That's, lead paints are actually still used today for some artworks. And, uh, they're very toxic. There and I know there's other toxic art ones, art ones too. Like the most popular, the most known one is like spray cans, spray can, paint, spray paint. Once you have all the proper safety, had to go. Oh yeah, I've already said that. Until that time, however, all of the assignments would require safer supplies. And now we have pivoted to this. We might as well finish the full video. <laughs> the grumpy gator holds a hand to her throat, mumbling to herself as she grabs a metal flask and drinks from- She is drinking vodka in class! <laughs> Alright, is something going on here? Ikenen speaks in a hushed tone, just loud enough for me to hear over the makeshift manatee. Olivia has been telling me you've been making goofy faces at her. No, I said he's been staring at me all through class. Huh. It's weird. It's like he's never seen someone like me. Can't you move him to a different seat? Now hold on a second there, Olivia. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm just make this I'm sure this is just a misunderstanding. Mr. Eigenden. Well, Inko, you tell us. What's on your mind? Can't have disagreements before classmates put this early in the air. I'm confused. I didn't even know there was disagreements between us. Well, sometimes it's the little things you do that you don't think about that affects people the most. Anything like that come to mind? I shake my head. Olivia's glare doesn't dis diminish away from my field of view. I mean, I've been a bit curious about her since we sat next to each other. And I'm friends with some of her friends. We all sat together at lunch yesterday. I could have nods himself thoughtfully. It sounds like he just wants to hang out, Olivia. Her face scrunches at the mere thought. Olivia eyes me suspiciously and slowly moves out the door towards the nearest water fountain. I get in size. Alright. He leans back in this chair with his arms resting behind his head. 
Inko, I told you yesterday, in the, if the air is needing cleaning, you do it yourself. Now she's in a mood because you were staring her like a weirdo. And here I thought you two would get along. She even gave you that sketch she made of you. Truthfully, I'm impressed, but here we are. What's going on, the big guy? You don't mind me asking, Mr. Ikenen. Yes? Why is she so open with you? How do you mean? Just now, she spoke more in that conversation than all the other times I've seen her yesterday. I saw the canteen. I figured it might something to do with her voice, but it's surprising. What about us the other way around? It's unfortunate, but she really just rarely talks at all. I guess she really trusts me. I've known her since she was a freshman. I seemed to gravitate towards her art and how I taught her, but soon I took her under my wing. Now she lives with Damien, right? He's at the lunch table. Oh, but she lives with Damien, right? He's at the lunch table and she still barely talks to him. So much that I keep hearing weird things about her. I could have leans forward in his chair, suddenly attentive. Is this about you gossiping with Ben yesterday? A bit. He showed up to the table and said something about her being the same after she left. Probably some drama there, but I don't want to pry. He nods. But also Liz told me some weird things too. He stops nodding. I know of her. Is something wrong? No, no. She just said I w shouldn't get invested in her being her friend. Everyone's being real weird about it, so I was curious myself. I guess that's why I was looking at her weird. Sorry. I could rums his temple. Ay, ay, ay. It's worse than I thought. What is? I'll put it this way. You've met three people that know Olivia other than me. Of the three, one thinks highly of her, and the two start unloading drama on anyone willing to listen. In this case, you. Now what are you so confused? Important question, then. Do you really want to be Olivia's friend? Huh? I mean, I guess. A judging eyebrow is raised my way. Are you really or just curious about her? He seems pretty serious about this. Yes, then. Olivia's returns to class and rolls right up to the desk back. Have you changed his desk yet? Ikeda nudges his head towards me expectantly, prodding me on. I'm sorry I distracted you during class, Olivia. Uh. She looks up to Idigan and gives a similar nod. Sure? I mean, you're welcome. I mean, thanks. Shit. But, uh, no, really, I don't want to be distracted. Come on, Olivia! The least you could do is give him another chance. You never know! I really don't want to know. I mean, he's, like, friends with Damien. But I don't really want to, you know, not in this class. But I'd like to be your friend. She stops and raises an eyebrow. A lot of those going around instantly. Like she was expecting this response. She looks her icon in for help. Actually, Olivia, I think he'd also make a good friend for you. G what? You both are quite similar at heart, though you may have different methods. Perhaps you'll find some compromise between the cynicism and naivety if you work together. Finally, the last fragments of her imaginary fortress collapse. Olivia can only look at the art teacher with timid confusion painted across her features. Uh, well, I... I don't... Are you for real, Mr. Iconet? I am! He's actually another class of mine! I've seen him. He is passionate about his camera, like you are with the brush. And I expect to do great things from him. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, I really thought, uh... Oh. She accidentally bit her tongue. Her mouth is clamped shut. It's just my opinion, but you can make your own choices, Olivia. She nods furiously. Oh, the movie's about to end. You shoot to get back to your seat. We good here? Olivia side-eyes me again and nods once more. All right! He motions us to skedaddle. Olivia backs from her spot. Thanks, Mr. Ikeden. For what? I just gave an opinion. I get back to my seat and stare absentmindedly at the projected screen as I just Ikeden's words. He said he only gave me his opinion, but it seems he also gave me an opportunity to take the right steps in connecting with Olivia. And with what he said about be her being passionate with a brush, it's got me more curious about her artistic prowess. Whatever Olivia was thinking before regardless seems to have been forgotten, as she focuses entirely on the teacher. 
<laughs> He's literally the wingman. <laughs> the last thing we need is another burned down classroom. Or what happened in my high school classroom, uh, kids stabbing their hands by accident. <laughs> Good times, good times in the high school art classroom. <laughs> there was a lot of blood from what I heard. <laughs> I wasn't in that class, but I heard about it. <laughs> did any of you ever have a fandom shitter in your in your high school? We did. It, it was like, I think it was in our last, it was our, in our last year of high school too, that this phantom shitter was just shitting in the hallways. No one knew who was. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> The way I can said those words makes me imagine some pretty horrible outcome. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, good old high school days. Oh, the oh, but there was another thing where another kid burnt, uh, set fire to the toilet paper in the boys' bathroom, and I actually know who did it. I, I didn't really put the pieces together until after I graduated, but yeah. Uh, we could I think we couldn't go to school for a day because of the smoke and when the fire alarm was pulled out I was surprised because uh, my classroom was actually the closest to that burning bathroom and I had no idea what was going on <laughs> anyways <laughs> I turned my seat and leaned closer to Olivia hey uh what what now what 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 is it what? I'm not gonna let you draw me the hell Olivia groans and looks to I again pleadingly all she gets for her troubles is a thumbs up. <laughs> Fine, 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 fine. Here. She holds out her sheet for me. Wait, isn't this cheating? When did he get his desk? Why does he have a sleeping mask? Mmm, I look over the answers. I'll still learn the safety procedure. <laughs> My man, I get to... <laughs> Now I can see why you like him. He's literally the wingman. <laughs> have a good lunch, now! The moment the bell rings, Olivia shoves most of her things in her backpack, not caring if her notebooks get crushed. And once she zips up, she races out of the classroom. I guess she doesn't want to get caught in the chaos of the lunchroom stampede. <laughs> Damien's there, chowing down on some sandwich stacked with various meats. And like yesterday, Olivia's already at the table. Hey, Damien, you've seen Liz? I thought she was joining us for lunch. Without a word, Damien points to the palm tree next to us. Oh, that's no tree. Hey, Enko. Couldn't see you from up there until I heard you. Well, I guess I'll go get my fruit from the vending machines again. Oh, wait, wrong voice. <laughs> Damien opens a crayon of Santa, and just as Liz lowers her head next to him, she's wearing a novelty soda cap. <laughs> I so love they got a brockerosaurus. <laughs> it's such a, It's so stupid, but I love it. <laughs> Liz entered the contest too, right? Everyone must be trying to win the cash prize. The money is okay. <laughs> but the real part of the solutions are the spots and magazines cover in the featured article. How can she still articulate? <laughs> oh, and I went all the all the extra mile to have her, her mouth be full. Well, no, I I don't plan on being an artist per se. The plan is to be an art antiques dealer, specifically with art. What does that mean? It means she buys the splatter canvases that everybody else uses for modern laundering. <laughs> yeah, Damien. If Damien fucking knows, then everybody else is screwed. <laughs> From learning skills in a class like that, you'll be the perfect husband. Yeah! Wait, what? What? <laughs> There's simply no getting around it. This is a period we'll all have to sit through. And there isn't any solidarity to be had in our shared misery. It's simply the reality of high school history class. <laughs> I was the only one who fucking paid attention. I I love, uh, we were in geography class one time. Uh, and we were talking about the, the, the docks in Toronto. <laughs> and I don't remember what this girl said, but he's essentially like, how did the boats get in? It's not like we just learned about the St. Lawrence River. <laughs> Like, there's no docks in Toronto. I'm like, wow, she's getting far in life. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> the high school drama's just gonna pop up from here and out <laughs> when I just remember it. In fact, I have the perfect idea of mine that'd catch Olivia's attention if that doesn't ruin everything it does. She's not un uncompassionate, but Miss Prockling has a lot less tolerance for horseplay in her class. We probably wouldn't get another chance. 
and by going on Colt Sully's one chance policy and how these guys aren't even considered playing along, I bet it wouldn't be pretty. Kind of makes me concerned for Olivia. I could just hold on to the note and give it back after class. Heck, Olivia would have never even known. I don't think she even knows I'm in this class. Draw the gator girl in a high fight. Let's go. <laughs> eh, what's life without a little bit of risk? I wait for Miss Prockley to start the new tangent to make sure I have enough time. She said something about the single continental movement. Time to move. This is going to be basically a stick figure, but it's just a doodle. If only you could doodle a photograph. I'm not sure I meant by that. Also, I don't know how to draw a wheelchair. In the end, it looks more like an abstract depiction of a bow like a T-Rex than what I wanted. Oops, it'll have to do. Olivia takes the note over her shoulder. Once more, not checking it. She seems to deflate on opening the note. Probably because all the blank space. She doesn't look like she recognized whatever I did earlier. Maybe I should talk about it after class? I don't know, it seems like an okay to do. She passes the note again. What? Once more, the process of students taking the note, passing along without anyone looking at it. Although this time it's a little more collectively annoyed. It probably won't go around again. Why the heck would Olivia send the note around again? Nobody's going to change their mind and draw something now. Is it desperation? Thoughtlessness? Whatever it is, the note's coming my way again. Once I take it, I confirm yes. Nobody else has wrote anything. However, there's a new doodle of a rat with a flamethrower from Olivia. You. I nearly fall out of my seat from the sudden loud noise. There's a moment of unwavering silence before a voice speaks up. Miss Hafford? The girl in question shrinks in her seat because of embarrassment. S Sorry, Miss Prockling, I uh, saw a spider. Miss Prockling simply sighs, muttering to herself, turning her attention back to writing notes on the board. She turns her head back slowly, enough for me to make eye, eye contact with me. While she eyes me with jutting contempt and curiosity, I see her hand is tenderly massaging the tip of her tail. Looking at the floor, I think she managed to ship the lionium. As soon as Prockling turns around to continue teaching, Olivia scribbles something down, and then my birds fight. She turns to look at me once more hesitating, and then flicks the note in my direction. It completely misses me. I try to catch it midair, but end up slending my face together. <laughs> Miss Nito, what was that noise? I palm the note into my sleeve and strain my injured eye open. The teacher probably meant the foot stomping. I uh, found that spider, Miss Brockling. Olivia takes her time to pack away her supplies, occasionally glancing in my way. Gone is the paranoia. It is now just plain confusion. As if I wouldn't play the doodle game thing with her. Even as she wheels out of the room, I notice her eyes are still on me. I give her a wave goodbye. She seems shocked by turning her head and finally passing through the doorway. Right then, homework. Something presses in my chest and lurches me to stop. It's Olivia holding an arm out to stop me. She's still staring at me though, though less suspiciously. Her jaw open, but no sound comes out. She realizes her hand is still out and retracts awkwardly, indecidedly darting between a hoodie pocket and an armrest. Is she expecting something? Oh, the note, maybe. Hey, I... You could have told me. Huh? That you were in Miss Prockling's class, too? You could have mentioned that. Sorry, I guess I was aiming for a bit of the dramatic reveal there. Hmm. She brushes her hair aside. Well, whatever. Later. <laughs> Later, Gator. <laughs> Why did you stop me out here? She stops her chair at mid-turn, with gray eyes contemplating the dirty floor. I don't really get you. Olivia's turned back to me, and now I can see the nervousness in her pupils. Why do you care? Why indeed? Well, I guess the main reason is I want to be friends. With me, though? Sure! Those tiny moments in which I saw the gator girls hyper-animate close to mine, but I can't help but smile. The small shows of genuine feelings. I think Mr. Akadim was alright, honestly. Olivia hums in disagreement, finally turning away. Ah, crap. I mean, those two forward with me? I swing my backpack around so I can reach inside it. 
I still have the note. Note. With what? With the doodles from class right now? Why? I just figured you want it. It was fun filling it out and all. Just not about to pull up my binder. The Gator Girl looks at me and shakes her head. It's just doodles. You can just throw it out. Keep it. If it's so important. For the briefest second, I swore I saw her mouth show warm. A tiny smile. But now she's back to looking neutrally at... Huh. Didn't notice the school at elevators. Why don't more people use them? She flashes a key. Because, yeah, we have the same at our school, too. So this is part of her accommodations. Makes sense. By now, the hallway is cleared up a bit. The elevator arrives. Olivia rolls in. She moves her arm to push the button, jams the key in some sort of slot. Uh, what's the look for? You coming? Oh! I slide in beside Olivia just before the door closes. It's probably safe to catch your foot in and just reopen, but man, this thing is ancient. There's an inspection surface lazily plastered on the door from this side, and it's covered in coffee stains and other signs of age. Is this thing really safe? Olivia shrugs. What's the worst that could happen? Our legs break? She eyes me with a smirk. This might have been a mistake. <laughs> Cut chunk. My heart drops as the space around me seems to drop for a split second. Yeah, they they usually don't allow like they need it for kids that are in wheelchairs or even temporary in wheelchairs. So they they are required in most schools to have an elevator if there's more than one floor. How slow is this thing? I look over to Olivia. She uses the thing daily. Surely it normally runs smoother. Her mouth hangs slightly open in an amused grin watching my sudden onset of claustrophobia. Relax, dude. This is normal. Right. This is normal. This thing jostling around like it's gonna drop us at any second is completely normal. When we reach the bottom, the doors clunk open and I practically fall out. Olivia casually rolls from behind. Somehow, I sense this with a degree of superiority. Anyways, uh, see you later, Gator. Oh, yeah, see ya. <laughs> After a while, Crocodile. It's cute to see you all enthused over this, Lewis. I love you, man. <laughs> Will this be Thursday for a while? Uh, it might. Uh, I, ge I do genuinely enjoy this game. I'm sorry, Lewis. I, I totally do agree that this is a good game. So I'll try to be 100 percent of this. So yes, this will be on Thursday for a while. That's kind of what happens with variety streams. If there's a long set game. It's gonna be played. <laughs> yeah, they call me mad. No, you're still crazy. You are definitely very crazy, Lewis. I flip through my contacts in my phone to find Damien's number. I put my phone up to here and pray that he picks up. Pick up the phone, baby. Oh, After a minute show of waiting, the dial tone cuts off and is replaced by Damien's voice. Yo, yo, what up, Nico? Hey, Damien. I'm at the school right now. It looks like no one's here. What's that about? Huh? What do you- The brief pause on the other end of the line. Oh, Didn't you hear? Hear what? Today's the last warm day of the season, so everyone's celebrating. Celebrating? Yeah, we're actually, like, having a cookout at my place today. You wanna come over? I weigh my options. Either go to the party, or I could take the metro back and sit in my room doing nothing. Inky, you still there, buddy? Yeah, still here was just clearing my schedule. You know, it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, of course not, amigo. A friend of a friend of mine is a friend of the family. Alrighty then. <laughs> nice, I'll text the address. See you soon, compadre. Huh, looks like Damien feels- He said that, you dense motherfucker. <laughs> I could have just come all this way, but it felt bad coming over empty handed so I got something for the party. A simple salad bowl from one of the local stores on the way over. It doesn't seem like much, but as my mom taught me, it's courteous to come with a par to a party with something. The door swings open and out steps Damien. And go? Wow, man, you're like crazy early. And you come bearing gifts. Yep, here I am. I didn't want to come empty handed, so I stopped by the store and got a salad. Aw, uh, you didn't have to, dude. Serious though, you like really didn't have to. My family and I are carnivores, but thanks. To the left of me, it looks to be an older, heavier set of Damien. Ha! <laughs> well, howdy there. Hello, sir. I'm Inko. 
He shifts the barbecue tongs from his right hand to his left so he can shake my hand. Yeah, yeah, some of them would straight up just be carnivores. <laughs> we got brisket, flanks, ribs, sore line, tender line, top line, bottom line, rounds, shanks. That's a lot of cow. Damien, sweetie, you shouldn't keep your baby brother waiting any longer. At the mention of the younger sibling, a tiny Damien clone jumps over the deck railing and... Acid punch! Oh god, why? Just look, bro, it's like Power Raptors. I told you you could do it. I'm I'm sorry, Inko. Vincent! This is why I don't want you watching those violent shows. <laughs> While Damien's dad attends to the grill, I move to the banister overlooking the pool. It's filled with a couple aquatic toys and air-filled floaties. Man, I wish my place had a pool. I have a lake. <laughs> I wonder how deep... Whoosh. Booba! Booba! The hell are you doing here? I was invited! Focus on the face. <laughs> what the heck are you doing here? I live here, moron. Crap. Right. Damien even told me on the way. Nobody was at school when I got there. Huh? Yeah, I checked the doors and everything. They announced the holiday yesterday in home run. Didn't you hear it? That's what Liv said over the PA yesterday. I thought it was just the school's <laughs> anthem or something. Huh, no wonder everyone was staring, staring as I salute. <laughs> Man, I wish I knew all about this earlier. I would have brought my chunks. You? No, I'm not sharing my pool with you. But why not? Instead of answering me, when me a tail whips out of the water. I don't want to see this. <laughs> well, first my little bro has like something to say to you. Sorry for giving you an acid punch, Inky. He looks like he taught his younger sibling about my nickname, too. It's all right, er... Vinny! Vinny extends a hand up for handshake. Oh, but it's obscured by his sleeves. And secondly, we need a few chair. Oh, and secondly, we need a few chairs out here. We got some folding ones, but also some from the kitchen. Got it. They're cheap woods. Not really heavy at all. After the chairs, we do the table together. Mom be pissed if that got dropped. Why? It's the only one we got. And after everything's set, we can play something fun, like, okay, little man? Vincent grins and bolts back towards the house. Damien chuckles and we fall after the kid. <laughs> back! The table drops even a few inches before we lift it with a hard crash onto the tile. I'd be worried about the cracks, but the floor is already pretty shattered from year from the years. The same actually might be their gold storage. It's just painted to look like wood. That's the only explanation. We catch our breaths and give the strained muscles a moment to react. Why can't Olivia help us? She's super strong. Olivia is enjoying herself in the pool, bro. We don't want to ruin her time. Her chair thing has wheels. We can use that. Uh, I think it might be a bit small. Oh, no fair. She's going to have her, her own. She's going to go to her room. So why can't she help? Hey, come on. Not for the guests. Yeah, it's true, though. You don't know that. Come on. Damien, mini me pouts. I think I got a better grip on the table now. Let's try one more time. Okay, I'm ready. One, two. Wait, huh? What's up? Oh, mom must have been talking about the plastic table in the garage, not the dining room table. You're right! What? Guess we gotta haul this thing back into the dining room, fellas. <laughs> the secret is you gotta let these babies have some time searing on each size. That way it really hones in the flip splat. Whoops. There's a bout of silence between everyone as we stare down the piece of meat on the floor. It's not too rude. Hey, Olivia, you want it? A pair of eyes over the edge of the pool. Sure. Doss it in. What? What's this now? Randy proceeds to chuck the steaks right into the water as one would do with the chum and track fish. Whoosh. Jeez. Anywho, since you're a first guest, Inko, you get the honor of cho uh, getting choice picks. Which one do you want? Oh, I don't want to pose or anything. Ah, nonsense. Besides, better getting your picks now before the other guests arrive later. <laughs> I think it was payback for all the soda and chips you'd be getting us. Come again. Uh, well, I guess the burger is more convenient. 
I don't get to attend a family barbecue every day. Excellent choice, Inka. You want it rare, medium rare? Well done. Hey, Inko, go for the rare. Damien licks his lips as he says that. Where, what the? Hey, oh, oh, carnivore's right. I'm pretty sure a raw burger would kill me. I've seen some of that synthetic meat around that might be cheaper. Why not try it out? <laughs> the grill! <laughs> oh, that's great. Even the grill didn't want it. Sorry. Oh, Olivia! Across the yard, Olivia constantly drifted into the middle of the pool. Although a look came across her face upon earing Damien's mom as she began to paddling towards the raid deck. Are you going in so soon? Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to wait until the others get here? Yeah, wait until like the food's ready so we can all eat together. I'd rather not. I just have a lot of art stuff I gotta do. Sorry. Damien's little brother steps in from the small deck. But you so we play sometime today. She tried to back her under her uncertain tone with a shaky smile. M maybe later, Vinny. Uh, have fun? She lifts herself from the pool and kneels on top of her chair. I'm curious how her legs work, but my best guess is perhaps they only do above the knees. Turning about, her hands carefully set her feet down around the chair's footrests. Fully set into the chair, Olivia rolls herself into the sliding back door into the house. Damien rushes through the back door in the house. A moment later, he emerges again to show off the new guests. Come on! Don't make it weird! Hi, everyone! Oh, Inko, you're here! Yeah, I got roped in. Neat! Uh, come on, Uncle Mike, it's through here. Hey, no, I'm not that old! <laughs> doing good, doing good! How about yourself? What's with this ridiculous getup? Is it Mardi Gras? Haha, uh, no, nothing like that. I've just been trying to relate more to the younger generation recently. It seems we're just too different these days at all. Ah, come on, leave that stuff to the kids. Then he sees me. Huh. Mr. Ferris! You know him? We've met. He takes the same train as me. He's been helping me out. Recommended I try this chain out. Liz jerks her head in my direction furiously. I'm gonna get it later. God, I really regret the handshake now. I think popped all my bones at once. Turning to the grill grimace, I swallow my nerves and take up the tongs. Right, nothing to worry about. Okay, nothing bad so far. Hey, ya! <laughs> oh, everyone else is talking about Randy's cooking, and I figured I'd see what's on the menu. What do you think I'm doing? Why aren't you getting my uncle to dress like he's going in to be in a music video? He asked for help. You thought that was good help? Yeah, he just didn't take it right. Across the yard, Vinny's jumping at the shiny object. Mr. Fair caves in and lends it to him. See? Problem solved. Ignoring how Vinny is now strutting around like a gangster. So she does this often? Every time Damien's folk throw a party, she slips away in her room. I see her, like, at her window. Her eyes motion to me to turn and look at the particular window. I can't really see from this angle. Why would now be any different then? Liz shits me a knowing look. What? Well, I figure she was opening up a little to you. I mean, I guess, to some degree. Not like I have any frame of reference. At best, I can kind of talk to Olivia now. Hiss. Wait, did you just hiss at me? No. Then what? Oh, God! Spinning around, I see that something has caught fire. I grab whatever it is, tongue flailing around, hoping the air will put it out. It works well enough, but it's pretty burnt. Well, that one's a lost cause. I give the piece of charcoal a careful look, and yeah, it doesn't look edible in the least. Anyways, I want to go catch up with the others. See you around! Liz turns to the rest of the gathering, leaving me rolling at the grill for once again. Burnt piece of meat aside, the rest of the food is looking good. I'm still not exactly the best grill master. Not like it matters too much to Damien's folk. Whether the food is actually cooked or not is purely aesthetic matter. A couple more flits and the meat is brown and sizzling, which is good enough in my book to put them along with some of the other fish's pieces. <laughs> Nothing about done with my shift. Damien's term is neck. He's just going to be wrapping up these last few things. 
It doesn't take me long to spot him chatting with Liz, who's in Rapture, but with every guaranteed high concept discussion they are having. Hey, Damien! Damien's frills perk up a bit as he turns to face me. Your turn on the grill! All right, you got it, hombre. He waves over Liz over and takes form a full, firm hold of the spatula. Okay, it's time to get some more. He suddenly pauses his eyes, fall upon the charred remains of a once juicy and savory piece of meat. He picks up the piece of meat before chomping down it with a single bite. Okay, I'll finish cooking the last pieces. Inky, if you'd be an awesome dude, can you start serving the others when they're what's ready to chow down on? I get Damien a nod and I grab a tray of cooked meat. Thinking about it though, I do have my camera securely stored in my backpack inside the home. A part of me considers grabbing it. As I look towards the house, I spy a certain someone at their window. Olivia leers across the bar. She's too far away to tell exactly what she's staring at. That must be a room then. Her gaze shifts a bit. I still can't see what she's looking at, but it's in my direction. Or Damien, he's sitting right next to me. I carefully trace where her eyes are focused, leaning to the side, slowly coming to the plate in my hand? Checking back, she's later focused on something I wonder. So we lift the plate up and the heads tilt upwards with it. I lower it and the heads tilt downward. A part of me wants to test this further, except that would be a real waste of food. Whatever illusion she was under is shattered with the shake of a head. I can hear Olivia's annoyed growl from here as she turns her snout out at me and returns to whatever she was doing. Ungluing my fingers from the plate, Damien's mo mother notices my plate. You can use the kitchen sink for that, Inka. Or the pool! Sticking my thoroughly marinated fingers into the pool? That just seems like a first issue. Whoever has to clean it up later. Thanks, ma'am. But they, they also just, like, straight up toss meat in the pool, which is far worse than what he was gonna do. <laughs> While I feel the stickiness to start to unstick, I look out the window. Damien's parents seem to be focused on Zin Vinny, but Damien is still shooting looks to the left. The hyperactive hybrid shoots up from his seat, disappearing from view. I wonder where he... Woo! Splish! There's plenty of soda, so I'm not in danger of any dehydration at least but geez i'm only now just noticing how warm i am so stepping inside i'm all surprised there's no steam coming off of me looks a little red too good thing i didn't bring any sunscreen crap it's not that bad yet maybe the pains have some sunscreen around why would they have sunscreen no the reptiles they wouldn't have any maybe i'll just have to deal with it my knuckles start hurting from being wrung so much the smell isn't gone, though. <sighs> Anyways, this should be enough clean enough to- Both of us are frozen, still locked in a staring contest. The steak shoved in her mouth. She stares like a deer caught in the headlights. She bits the steak back onto the plate in her lap and grips the inside of her sleeves. It takes me a moment to collect myself to muster up a conversation. Uh, yeah, your delivery came in. You want a soda with that? The joke goes on laughed at. I tried. Step to the side and give Olivia enough space. She rolls up herself up to the fridge, opens it, rummages through. We exchange a few awkward glances to the point where she's palatable and where it's palatable in the air. So what are you doing? Getting a soda. The kid's taking your spot in the swimming pool. Oh, that's fine. I'm just gonna go crash in my room. Well, there's still a party going on outside? I'm busy with art stuff. Stuffing soda can in her coat pocket, Olivia redirects herself from the flick of her tail closes the fridge shut. But what about the party? What about it? It's still going on. And? Look, I got stuff to work on. Even though it's a holiday, it seems like the perfect time to get together with family friends and I'm not their family, if you haven't noticed. And I'm not going to be here much longer. That's a new look from her. Was because of what I said. Olivia? What? There's a couple different things dancing atop my tongue that I wish to say. Some would be too intrusive, especially what she just said. One have her stick us the most, especially had she brought up working on it. I generally want to see Olivia's process. Would you, uh, mind some company? What? It seemed pretty empty in the house to be by your lonesome, so maybe it'd be nice to hang out? Plus, I've been wanting to see your art for a while. Especially I recall her freshman piece that's displayed right next to the principal's office. I'll even show some of my stuff. I have a portfolio drive in my backpack after all. 
I have to hold back my laugh as silly strangled noises as surprise confusion and escapes her mouth. Is that an okay then? No, it's it's just I don't want anyone else in my room. How about the living room? I motion at the well loved couch nearby. She hums and hot for a moment. Are you really that interested? Yes! I've been wanting to see your work ever since I found out about the cityscape piece and the gala was yours! Olivia catches her hands tightly. Okay, fine, fine. If you're so interested, you can watch. She wheels herself back towards the shut door. Need to get my stuff set up first. Sure, I'll be here on the couch! I kind of feel bad for missing out on the party, but I doubt I'll ever get another chance like this. Olivia returns with a small easel. Already set up with half-finished painting. Ooh. She takes a moment to shift herself from the wheelchair into the end of the couch right next to me. She's pretty close to me. I can feel her thigh barely brush against mine. I try to paint no mine. The painting looks like a bust of a nondescript dino guy. Although how vibrant these guys are, it could easily be a portrait of someone specific. This isn't that good. She rips the page off and crumples it in her hand. Starting over then? Don't interrupt. She takes a deep breath. The paintbrush near the canvas slowly and gracefully, although it's clear her nerves are getting to her. Okay. Wait. Lovely looks down for a moment before she jerks her head back up. Her face is getting a reddish hue. D dude, why did you scooch so close to me? Yeah, I, th I thought it, like it's a good excuse for him to stay inside because he's getting sunburnt. You're the one who sat next to me. She looks away for a moment, realizing how over the top her reaction was. Olivia does a double take with me, brows furying. What's wrong with your skin? I was born like this. Shut up, that's not... You know what? Yes, it is. I mean, it's red. Oh, yeah, I think I'm sunburnt. I look over the red splot on my arm. Olivia raises a hand and touches it. Ow, why? Jeez, that really hurts? Yeah, it does. I didn't think to get sunscreen on my way over. There wouldn't happen to be any here, right? Point taken. <laughs> Why are you so white, Olivia? <laughs> Just snap a leaf off. M Mrs. Payne won't care, probably. I think I've heard something about that plan before. Alright, I guess I'll give it a shot. It bends and snaps off pretty easily. Man, this looks good enough to eat, but it probably tastes awful. But is it really good for curing sunburnt skin? It is! It's a natural, um, uh, what is it? Yeah. It, it's good. It, it's not sunscreen, but it helps with the healing process. <laughs> it's good for tacos and smoothies. My god, I cannot wait to try your tacos someday. I have only had white people tacos. <laughs> Mark's Pizzeria! Did you know? I bring up the Alola leaf. This it? She nods and extends a hand to grab it. I hand her the thick leaf and she extends a single claw. Once she catches the end of the skin, she would make quick whirl, peeling the husk off. You do that often? Not me. Sofo uses a lot to make smoothies for the fan. Oh yeah, you look at that. And healing salves for Vinny. They're real pretty too. Olivia blinks, coughs, and grimaces. To a uh, paint, I mean. No! Uh, no need to remove your jacket. Just roll up your sleeves and put up the jelly on your neck. She hands me a now exposed jelly, all while doing her best not to look lock eyes with me. After rolling up my sleeves, I scoop up a dollop of opaque substance. The feeling of relief hits the moment I spread it across my neck. Man, this feels good. I don't want to poke at Olivia for no real reason, but this might be my only chance to ask. Hey, Olivia. Mm. Your family, the Pines, they seem like a lively bunch. What's that supposed to mean? Like, I knew Damien was eccentric, but I can see he gets it from the rest of your family. Hmm. First of all, the Pines are my godparents. Secondly, yeah, they are. So, how long you know them for? Olivia pauses for a moment, mid-bro strokes, and continues. Practically my whole life. 
Jamie and I have known each other since we were carpet crocs. And his parents have only known my dad since, well, forever. Since before we were even neighbors. Ah, uh, friends of the family? Pretty much. The whole reason I'm living with them. Her muscle clamped shut. Forget what I just said. The words were spoken with a tone, a tinge bitter with something. A tone I was very familiar with whenever my own family is brought up. Sure. The only sounds left were her brush strokes on the canvas. My focus turns up to the patch of blotchy red and pale acrylic oil slowly forming across the white expanse. Occasionally, Olivia's gray eyes would glance my way before going back to her work. Compared to the moil rough piece of the piece time lapse of art views I've reviewed, she was more deliberate with each of her movements. Pretty obvious since most of those were done digitally. Another thing I had not considered. Still, staring at the painting in progress itself, it's something uncanny about it. Now more form, it's definitely looking like something. Cupping my chin with one hand in contemplation, I used the other to try and chase out a peachy, pale, and vibrant red colors. Olivia looks back to me again with a glint of something that shines in her eyes. Hold that pose now. Hey! How long have you been using me as a layman doll? Her hand fails to cover up the snort that comes from her nose, followed by a gremlin-like cackle. <laughs> Consider it the price to see my process. I want a refund. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I, I have a theory too. I'm just gonna straight up say it because I'm the streamer. <laughs> it's because it's all about me. I have a feeling that her and her parents got into a car accident and that's why she's in a wheelchair. And they passed away, but she survived. Okay. Okay. Her cheeks puff up as she exhales her breath. Okay. <laughs> She finally turns her cherry red face to the canvas and expects her near-complete portrait. Can I... Yeah? Yeah? You can drop your hand now. Finally. I lay back on the couch, feeling my spinal cord pop in rapid succession. I said your hand. Can't. <laughs> I attempt to stretch my arm in front of me. And because of my stiffened muscle, my forearm is pulled back to my face. I repeat the motion several times. The movement has helped me ease the muscle until my arm finally doesn't feel spring-loaded. While I was busy trying to fix my arm, Olivia was packing up her canvas. Uh, that's about it. You can go join the others, or whatever. She drags the canvas, easel, and acrylic tubes back to her room. Wonder if she'll keep that one. And I wonder if she'll stay in her room again. Mm hmm. We've been inside for a while now, and I don't think anyone has noticed that we've gone. Vinny and Damien seem to accept Olivia would stay inside, but... Wait. Hmm? I've caught her a bit off guard. I would just do a simple gesture. If I'm going outside, it'd be rude of me to leave without saying bye, at least. She looks at me quizzically. Sure. I think I'll try staying until the end. This has probably been the best day I've had since I've moved here. And my first real friends in a long while. I'm glad to have been invited. She's not leaving, but she's scanning me suspiciously. Damien's been a great friend, and his folks have been really nice to me. Better than my own parents, even. You're lucky to have them, I think. I guess. Good for you. Have fun with that. I really need to... I think you should come along. What? Her eyes widen. Some color leaves her face. No, I, I can't. Why not? Mr. and Mrs. Payne. They already have Vincent and Damien to worry about right now, and they're hosting all the other guests. They got plenty to deal with already, and I'm not worth the accommodations. Just leave it. Let them be normal. Even then, like I said, I don't have much time left. They're your godparents, right? They're helping your folks, yeah. But they chose to have you here. They want to let you be normal. That doesn't... Or a normal part of their family, I mean. I don't think they have you here if they didn't want that. Oh, please, go on. Tell me more about my own family. Her voice is a little sarcastic. She's not making eye contact anymore, but she's listening intently. This is all stuff she's known already. But you're absolutely right on one thing. You don't have much time left. Neither do I, honestly. Even if it's mostly because of moving. You know what they say about little rolling stones gathering no moss. And that way, we're in the same boat. Give it a shot. There's some perfectly good moss right there. <sighs> okay. I'll try with you. That all actually was pretty dumb, but you're right.
Yay! What are you waiting for? A curtain call? With a grin, I draw the sliding door even wider, and then with a beckoning wave, I attempt to usher Olivia out as if I was her own personal attendant. Cut that out. Don't make it weird. Despite her words, her tone was much more humid than annoyed with me. Relax. Nobody was even looking. But it looks like there's definitely no more food left. About right. <laughs> As Olivia rolls down the small wooden ramp, I hadn't noticed. We catch Damien on the bottom step. Olivia? At the table, heads turn towards us, looks at surprise etches on the faces of most of them. Instead of answering them verbally, Olivia's hand comes up in a nervous wave. The rest of the party resumes in their prior discussion, although maybe a bit livelier than before. Hey, cool to see you out here again. Hey, Damien. Oh, wait. Hey, Damien, why are you all the way over there for? I can't stand to be by Liz's uncle while he's eating. He's got those fibrous teeth. Ugh. Like blue whales have? Yeah, freaks me out. His dentist must make a fortune. Ha! <laughs> yeah. Hey, Olivia, what are you doing back out here? You forgot? So you forget something? No, I just thought it'd be good to enjoy the weather a while. As it last. Oh, he's pogging! He's pogging! <laughs> Sorry, you know, this thing's got a mind of her own. Finally, the weird flap still. Dude, you were just complaining about Mr. Ferris and his teeth. At least he can keep his mouth shut. Hey, hey, I could always wear a beanie. No, you can't. Remember the last time you tried? Both Damien and Olivia share a laugh at an event they're privy to. When they finally finish, Damien asks the million dollar question. So, are you gonna, like, join in, or... She turns her head my way. I had to give a supportive thumbs up. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. You finally came out to play again! The rambunctious boy hoots and hollers as he bounces in circles around her. Olivia huddles his, her arms and looks to the side in my directions, feeling the stares from the table. I give her a researching thumbs up. Actually, this is perfect. Thank you, Vinny. This is something Olivia was able to give when she was so worried about just taking. I hope she goes for it. Uh, I'm a little tired, Vinny. What? No, come on, Liv. You promised we play today. Like old times. I... Please? Uh, alright, you win. I did promise. You want to play canon, then? Yeah, 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 yeah canon! Alright, then, you ready? Round loaded! Fire! Oh god, this was a bad idea. What? <laughs> Randy! Relax, Soph. Vinny's still young. Michael, Vinny, be careful! I'm okay, Mom! Poof! Have you gotten stronger, Olivia? No, shut up. Anyway, can we do it again, Libby? Olivia's smile pats his head. It's weird seeing it, but as she ready Vincent for another launch, the gator girl was a brightly toothy smile I never thought she had. Uh, Miss Payne? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, I get it. Vincent! Yeah, Dad! No more cannon today. Olivia and Vincent share a disappointed look. <laughs> I didn't miss much, right? I'm so glad you came out, dear. The older woman kneels in front of her and wraps her arms around Olivia. Ah, it's been too long, little ace. Randy's hand ruffles her hair, while his other arm encircles both Olivia and Sophia, while Olivia does her best to avoid his palm. I can see the oh. tiny smile on her face. But now things are winding down. The food is officially all gone. Everyone is exhausted physically and mentally, and thoroughly satisfied emotionally. Olivia pads by me, having returned to the pool to cool down and stretch out. Booba! <laughs> there was just one thing to really cap this off. Okay, everyone. I hollered to everyone currently on deck and grouped up nicely for me. I love that Vinny's looking like a gangster. <laughs> All right, on three, give me your biggest smiles. One. Wait. Olivia turns away from the camera, looking towards Damien. With a grin, Damien waves for me. Dude, you gotta be in this too. There was nods and words of agreement from everyone. 30, 29, 28. And by 13, I'd settled myself next to Damien and above Olivia. 
All right, nine, eight, seven, six. I feel something wrap around my ankle and press against the floor. Three, two, one. Ah! <laughs> my camera flash goes up ten times as I pushed over by Damien and pulled into the pool by Olivia. September 25th. <laughs> that was a good scene. <laughs> it's just the beginning? And you wanted me to 100% this? Ah!